the reason I'm pointing this out is that when we are in a situation where we're trying to create boundaries um, and we're trying to create boundaries because there's a negative energy that it's hard for us to, to hold our center with, I raise this as um, this research as a way to back up my assertion that you find anchoring images, you find anchoring constructs that ideally stem from an affectual experience, an experiential activity that you have done because it will be that much more impactful because it will be embodied. So for example, um, we do a lot in my work, we do a lot of work around establishing an internal symbolic language and then scaffolding the inner space based on that. Um, so we just did a course called um, Energy Expansion 101. And so it was five days in a row. And each day we would scaffold the inner space using guided visualizations and then expressing it externally. So we were using the inner space and then we were using vis um, visualization images and music. Actually, we used some drumming and some singing bowls to create an affectual, energetic, emotional experience, cultivating an anchor, basically, cultivating an anchor, cultivating a symbol that when you're in a sticky situation, you can access that anchor. And the, sh the, the focus goes from being, oh, what's going on out there to what's going on in here, right? And I can hold this position regardless of what's going on out here. So um, for example, one way to even just start conceptualizing this, you said, it's hard to draw boundaries. Well, that seems like a really great place to start. Just draw your boundaries, right? So if you were to create a representation of yourself, right? I might just draw a circle. I like circles and I feel compelled to color it in. But you can do, maybe you wanna draw a stick figure, maybe you wanna draw a triangle, just some representation um, of yourself. I just thought of a big rooted tree, great. If something pops up for you as I'm articulating this, yes. Like sometimes things will just flow in unexpectedly. So if this is me, um, you could imagine boundaries along different dimensions, right? So what is my boundary around, like if I'm having a particular thought or query, so let's, let's go with the question in the comments, a negative circumstance, right? So let's say there's another person involved in this scenario. So you might draw a representation for them. Now, maybe you experience them as particularly intense or um, boisterous or loud or invasive. You might create a representation that illustrates that. So I'm just, I'm just being a little stereotypical here, but like, let's just say you experience them like this, right? So there's the, there's their body. So like their body will have boundaries that indicate the inside of them and the outside of them. Your body will have boundaries that indicates the inside of you and the outside of you, right? Our epidermis is the most basic boundary we have. And the body, therefore, is the first organizer we have of all boundaries and of experience. So let's say you're in the space together, right? That you're in the room together and you're experiencing that person in proximity to you. What happens to you? What happens to you? Do you remain this? Do you still continue to feel this? you know, calm, blue, contained little circle? Or how do you start to experience them? And then how do you start to experience yourself? So I'm just riffing here. But like maybe you start to experience them as like coming at you, right? And it feels like, ah, oh, I don't even know how to deal with them, right? So what happens? What happens? Let's just draw a little storyboard here. Well, when that happens, I start to feel fractured. Right? Maybe I start drawing these lines, I start fracturing. And I feel like they start pushing into my cracks. And I already feel like um, barely holding it together. And now this person comes pushing all my buttons and pushing all my cracks. And now all of a sudden, I'm not this contained circle anymore. Now I start to look more like them. Right? Now I start looking like them. How do I get out of that? Well, so I believe that it's the magic of doing exercises like this. Okay, let's map it out. What would this need? So I'm gonna just put this out there. I have to stop soon because I have to pick up my son from school. But I want, to, I want to ask, put it out there to the audience. What might this character need? What's something I could add to the page? We're gonna be super literal about it. What is something I could add to the page to help, help this person out? Something I could add to the page. I could literally draw on the page. We're, we're, we're doing some, some uh, magic. We're working some magic here. We're coming up with a, with a ritual. 
So one of the things that was brought up, a line, yes. So tell me what kind of line? A force field, sure. And so let's say we're going to use line to draw a force field. What kind of line would it be? Would it be thick? Would it be thin? Would it be dashed? Would it be sharp? A barrier, right? A wall between both, right? So we're drawing a boundary, right? We're drawing a boundary. So it would probably have to be a fairly thick line because this there's a lot of momentum here, right? A lot of power. So we'd have to draw a pretty thick line, right? So this is this is someone who's not going to respond to someone who's very sweet and you know, um, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to express just like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but not someone who's going to respond to that, right? This is someone where you're going to have to draw a strong line unless you want to feel the impact of them, right? And it's probably someone who's going to fall back on intention, <laughs> right? So there's a thick line, right? So if, if I know that I'm going to have to hold a thick line with this person, if I know it's unavoidable, I have to be in the same room with this person, I'm going to have to hold a hard line with them. What can we offer? So we know this is what they need. What can we offer them? What, what, how, how might that person find support for holding a strong line with someone who only respects strong lines? A light of blue circle that is pushing the boundaries to say no. Okay, so there's some support, some support that buttresses it, right, from the center. Okay, so some support there. And if we were to translate support, how, what supports, and, and if you're watching this, you probably are already engaged in some kind of self-reflection. What are some of the supports that you have experienced that help you draw a line? Mm -hmm. What are some supports that, that make you feel stronger within yourself? Meditation and yoga, right? See, so now we're getting somewhere. So what are, so some ways we could buttress this is meditation, so being proactive, right? So having practices, having practices that keep our gas tank full um, so that when we, so that we're not, what's the term? So that we're unsupported, so that we're not unsupported when we are thrust into the circumstance, right? Anticipation. Like being aware of, this is sort of like when we do like, I guess you'd call it like trigger mapping or um, sometimes we can do, actually someone mentioned trees. So Deb Dana has a book, talks about polyvagal theory and exercises for calming the nervous system. And one of the exercises, um, and actually in art therapy, we do this too, using the tree as a metaphor for the body and recognizing that at on a different, um, looking at the tree as sort of like something that moves through three states, that of shut down and freeze, right? Shutting down, numbing out, dissociating, um, the fight or flight response, and then the um, being social, being able to interact and be in safety, being in reciprocal relationships with people, that your body will experience all of these three states in different ways. Um, so a tree might be a way to express that. Like, what does your tree look like when you're shut down or dissociated? What does your tree look like when you're in fight or flight mode? And what does your tree look like when it feels safe and secure? And maybe you're with someone who, instead of being like this, like, let's draw a more calming presence. Like, maybe we'll do another one just quickly. So, like, maybe you have someone who, so we are this, we tend to be this kind of blue shape, right? So what would be a better match for that kind of energy? Well, maybe someone who kind of is attuned, maybe mirrors some of that, but they have their own, they have their own flavor, right? So maybe there's something that there's a similar volume, but their shape is a little bit different and they have something to contribute to the way you experience and express yourself and your energy and you have something to contribute to them. So maybe in the interactions between you. Now you you get to play with these fun orange petals and they get to play with this, um, what did I just do with my blue marker? And they get to play with, ooh, what's it like to have this fun little circle around my middle, right? So now we're starting to play with each other, we're starting to play with each other. 
And so this is an energy that might be a better match, right? It might be a more compatible match. And those are other ways to play with what are dimensions of compatibility. How do I know when an energy feels good to me? If words are hard to, to use, then use exercises like this. Just play with it, draw it out, be creative. You don't have to put it into words all the time and that's okay, right? 